going to do I'm also going to do something else too that's pretty neat okay all right now see notice over here that we've got sales date sum and um, sales date some quantity some sales over here right and the course actually told us or, or at least the tutorial told us to add product first um, what I want to show you guys over here though it's pretty interesting is that when I add product so I'm adding product to the actual row by row right if I would have said group I would have been saying you know do what's called some aggregation summarize average do something like that right um, we grouped by territory already um, say I want to rearrange these in order well then I just move these up just like this so you guys can see now there's product and then there's sales date and then there's quantity right over there and then after that there's sales so just kind of keep that in mind that I can I can move these around to regroup these and then they appear in order from left to right within the actual wizard the other thing too is that notice that in the values a common misconception is that in the values in the values section you only put numerical things that are summarized that isn't true that is not not true as you guys can see you put things that appear on the row level with the actual numerical value so for example if one sales transaction is five for the product of diapers then diapers would go on the same row level um, that's known as your level of granularity or whatever else okay now once we actually get all that done let me click next then you guys will notice over here that on the layout right this is completely blacked out that's because we didn't put any groups over there so there's no need for it the wizard recognizes that because it's like but it's not grouped we know it is grouped because we have a list but we didn't explicitly put a group so it doesn't leave any of that so let's click next now let's go ahead and choose slate over here for our actual option right over here and then let's click finish all right now let me bring down this table and make it more you know bring down the table and make it oh you know prettier or whatever else more like more like the actual thing that we're doing so bring it over here there we go and I put a little bit of space and now I've got the table now watch what happens over here which is pretty neat before I before I come in and I do one more thing here look at that comes back right there's our table appearing on each and every single page and you guys see now you could give your users some text like this over here and notice this over here see the value 16,996 and it's repeating for each and every single group right so if I click next over here on the next group ah, oh, look at that and if I click the next group look at that and what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more to it I'm gonna change up just one thing on their instructions let me add territory back over here newsletter four and let me put the territory just so we can see it for our learning purposes and then let me come back and let me hit let me hit run again and look at this a newsletter for central which then only had Lauren Johnson in it that was it and then look at that over here I can see Lauren Johnson's um, I can see central sales because that's what it's grouping by and since Central only had Lauren Johnson it's also Lauren Johnson sales right so look at carrying case 16,996 now watch this look at North 13,747 pretty nifty if you've been watching this video very very nifty the way that we were able to get that grouping in the background that's one of the powers of a list type not only that but look how we've taken control over the formatting see how we've controlled the space over here see how we've had things repeat for every single page so every single page has its own unique space and its own unique values that's what a list gives us this is why I said list are the single biggest things to get for doing dashboards in SSRS now granted someone could argue that the business practices are the single biggest thing and that is true but I'm not I'm not hitting that at the moment I'm talking about the SSRS tool okay now right after we finish all that we've got groups and whatever else but you know what what if we wanted to do something right so I click on the table for just a moment and what if we wanted to add a total later right like we wanted to see maybe oh god is there a total I can see in here or whatever else because over here you know we don't really have any total roles or whatever else right that's not a problem we can do that quite easily come up to details right click over here then once once we right click on details over here go to add total and then usually right after the group so what we're doing over here is we're adding a total field because we weren't able to add a total field before so I click add total and then what it's gonna do is take all the details and basically give us a total over there for these two aggregated values quantity and sales it recognizes that it recognizes that they're numeric so they can be added up it even gives us a formula to let us know how they're going to be added up so it adds another row recognizes numerics and then sticks in a formula to be able to you know total them up let's click run again come down and look at that look at that right over there so there's our total right over there and if I wanted to just to add to this let me click design one more time I could type in total right over here 
there. And then just run that again. Very long page a little bit, but you guys can see this over here. And chances are you could you play around with it and make it smaller or choose smaller text. Maybe make the maybe make the table more compact. Maybe go in and add some formatting to make the table more compact first. So in fact, that's what we're going to do over here. So let me come back and let's make a couple of changes. I'm going to click design. And first thing I'm going to do is something that we've done again and again. I'm going to change, I'm going to change the, um, this formatting to currency so that it's cleaner. So shift, shift, and then I'm going to come right down just like we did before. So we've done this again and again and again throughout the course now. Hit the little currency symbol and boom, there we go. All right, now I've got that in currency and you name it right over there. Um, now, let's say that I want to go ahead and also change the number and make it, um, or, or actually change the date field to a clean date instead of the date time. We had seen that again too in the previous two tutorials. So again, we, we highlight it. We come back over to date, right? And then there's 10 different ways we can do this, right? In this case, we're just going to choose date this way. So down and click date and voila, we've now got date. So now we've got a clean date and whatever. Let's click run again table suddenly becomes smaller and look how clean the table is now very very nice so now we're really starting to come along let me click design and do one more thing make total bold just to make it sort of stand out there we go and now come back and click run there so you guys can see over here how we've actually got that down and notice how it's all just one page one view very nice and compressed so as you guys can guess, what can we start doing with this? Moving dashboards and things like that over there, making it look really nice. Definitely something we could do. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, though, guys, is we're going to even make this better. All right. We're going to add some more formatting to add some more visualization. And then we're going to add two different charts to it, which is going to be really, really cool to actually go ahead and to actually go ahead and see. So this very first part, you know, we've got our newsletter, you name it, right? And what I'm going to do over there is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to put in a little, oh, I suppose, line, right? Some little, some little horizontal line right over there that basically says, bam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and knock this out. I'm going to, I'm going to come over here to insert. So let me just get this real quick and get this going. So let me just show you guys this over here. Forgive me right now. You're not seeing my mouse for just one second because I'm bringing it over real fast right over there. And there we go. And then I'm going to click on the design tab. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a line over here to give it some sort of clean type of look and feel um, and make it and make it um, span about the size of this text over here. So I'm going to come over here, go with insert. Then once I'm inside of insert, I'm going to do a line. And lines are always nice, by the way, just as a general concept, just for those of you who might be starting out with, with report design or whatever. When you have different what are known as sections, like data sections or things like that in report, like notice how this was first just a description, almost like a header. Having a line placed in between them helps your users recognize intuitively that this section of data means something different. Like this particular section of data over here is explaining the results that were in here, like some sales and you name it. And so we put a line in there to let our users know that. Okay, now once we click on once we click on the line over here, and you guys can see I made the line about, oh, I came down and I made the line personally about six inches, even though it said a little bit, even though it's a little bigger, I'm going to make the line even a little bigger, in fact. Whoops, so just click on the line. And I'm going to make the line actually span just a little bit bigger. Make it span to about seven inches. There. So there's about seven inches, and I'm doing that for a reason because I'm going to add some things inside of it. And then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on this line. And then I'm going to make this line about four and a half inches, um, about four and a half points, I'm sorry, wide. So I'm going to come over here and the width, there we go. So there's the width at the very top and make it four and a half just to kind of emphasize it. And then I'm going to give it a color that's, that's um, kind of goes along with the general look and feel of the site. So I'm going to give it maroon. We had maroon earlier, so there's maroon right over there. There we go. And now I've got a line going on within this actual list. So we can all see the line over there. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to now take another section of the list and I'm going to do something very important. I'm going to add some I'm going to add some charts to the list. So, kind of to explain this tabular data, why not take charts and add them over here? So, I'm going to first just bring this down to give myself a little more space. Then, here's how I do this. So, this is very important. So, just pause for a second. This is where now we're going to take even more control over our freeform look and really begin to control that area. So, I'm going to click on insert right over here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on chart 
right over there, but, or not chart, I'm sorry about that, I'm sorry, that I'm gonna click on rectangle first, then later on I'll click on chart. So I'm gonna click on rectangle right over here and bring down a rectangle. Now I'm gonna take that rectangle and drop it. There we go, make sure it's aligned with the table, it is, that's good, because I want it to be aligned. I'm gonna make it a certain size, let's say to the end of the actual list right there. So I have a rectangle right over there that's actually appearing, okay? Now, once I've got a rectangle over here, this is very beneficial because now what I can do is I can choose to go ahead and actually scale it out to two inches wide and four inches, whatever else. I'm gonna leave it like this. It starts at about five, you guys can see, and then goes to about seven. Um, I'm gonna leave it like that at the, at the present moment. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a chart inside of it. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come back to insert. And this is where we're starting with charts. Now you guys can imagine we've got further lectures coming on charts that'll be big. So hang in there, this is just our very first introduction. So I'm gonna go to chart right over here, you guys can see that, and I'm gonna click on it. Now there's an option called chart wizard which builds a chart for me. I'm gonna click on chart wizard, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna choose a data set. Notice in your instructions it says list data set, but I forgot to rename it. So just call it data set one because that's the same one that everything's using. Remember that when you guys go back into your lab. So there's data set one right over there. And then after that I'm gonna click next. Now I'm gonna choose pi right over here, and then I'm gonna click next. So I'm making a pie chart at this point. Okay, now what I need to do over here is I need to choose some values over here, okay? So let me explain what these values mean so you guys can see them. First, drag product into categories first. So you guys see there's the categories. Keep that in mind for just a moment. There's categories right over there, right? So you guys can imagine the categories are gonna be, the categories are gonna essentially label all those things, right? And then, and then, and, and then once you actually um, drag products to get categories, drag quantity over to values. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at the quantities, right, by the particular, by the particular category. So quantities by, quantities by product, things like that, okay? Now, what I want you to do over here is after you finish that, so we're saying there's categories, there are the values that are being summed up by product, right? Now, what I wanna do over here is I wanna click next, then I can even choose a theme, a general color for it. So in this case, I'll choose slate, and then I'll click finish. I'm now gonna take this chart, which is way too big at the moment, the wrong section, right? And bring it down and fit it into my rectangle. And what I notice